Hey guys, Derek Gracely here. Welcome to the team. We're so excited that you chose to join Capstone Landscape Management. We're going to start by going over uh, one of our new mowers to the fleet, the Toro Z Master 3000. Our great friend from Toro, Ken Smith, is going to take us through a journey of that. Hi guys, I'm Ken Smith. Been in this business since 1983. Uh, I work commercial equipment on a big regular basis and I want to tell you a little something about the 3000 Z Master. Excited that your boss man has brought this into his fleet because it's a super machine that you're going to really, really enjoy. Very similar to what many of you are familiar with already, but we've got key switch here, you've got a manual throttle, and you've got a manual choke on this Kawasaki uh, FX engine. Start, might need to pull the choke out when you're starting it in the morning when it's cold, and close it, of course, quickly after you've gotten it started. Say, did we do that again just one more time? That sure. Pull the choke up, turn the key switch, the unit will start, and then you'll knock the, the choke right off to keep it running. I'll say, let's do that one more time. Sorry okay. about that. All right. Throttle, throttle position. You can put it at half throttle to three-quarter throttle. Pull the choke up, turn the key, and start the engine when it's cold. All right. Then once it warms, just a few moments, you can drop the choke and you're ready to operate. To engage the PTO on this and turn the blades on is simply pull up the, the PTO switch and the blades will automatically engage. I'm going to cut in on that. I can adjust, the, adjust it to my... It'd be a good day right there. Oh, I would have a shirt on. All right. on you're you're, hey, you're uh, 245. Yeah. No. <laughs> when you approach the mower, you're going to enter on the deck at the landing foot pad to enter. Once you get on the seat, you're going to adjust the seat to your height and weight. As you can see, it has a series of numbers. I'm approximately 190 pounds, so I'm going to keep that number as it is. There's an adjustment on the side. Bottom. There's an adjustment on the bottom that you can push in and slide back and forth. After adjusting the seat and you feel comfortable in the mower, you have to understand the control panel. The control panel is to the right of the seat, and you have your throttle control. Turtle is slow, rabbit is fast. When you crank the engine, you want to put it around medium to three quarter throttle. Pull the choke lever all the way to the top. Turn the key to crank the mower. Once the mower is running, you depress the choke button and you're ready to cut grass. Once the mower is running and you're ready to cut grass and you pull up to your property, you're going to choose your proper deck height. For cool season fescue lawns, we typically want to cut between three and a half and four and a half inches. The way you set that height is pull the pin, set it at number four, you're going to depress the pedal, pull the lever back, and release the deck. It's now sitting at the proper deck height to mow. After you set your deck height and you're ready to mow, you're going to disengage your parking brake and bring your handles in. To go right, you're going to push the left lever forward. To go left, you're going to push the right lever forward. To go forward, you're going to push both of them forward. And to go in reverse, you're going to pull both of them backwards. To stop the mower, you're going to release and put them in the neutral section. Prior to getting off the mower, you're going to set the parking brake, put the lever in neutral on both sides, throttle down the long mower, and turn the key switch to off. When you're ready to mow, you repeat that process by turning the mower on, engaging your throttle control, Although after the lawnmower has been cranked, you do not have to pull the choke and you're ready to engage the mower. You turn it on, you release your parking brake, engage your hydraulic arms with your deck height set properly, pull up to the lawn, 
Then you're going to pull the PTO switch, which is the yellow button in the control panel. When you pull that up, you'll hear a click and the blades will engage. When the blades engage, the blades are spinning and active. You want to make sure there are no people around. You want to make sure there's no animals around or no debris in the lawn once the blades are engaged. Prior to mowing, anytime you're about to put the mower on the lawn, especially if there's any hills or safety concerns, you always want to engage the seatbelt. The seatbelt comes across your waist, clicks in just like a car, make sure it's fully engaged and release. You also want to always make sure the ROP system is up. This is a safety piece for the mower in case the mower ever decides to flip or roll over. If that ever happens, you always want to be in the seat belt with the roll bar in place. Once the mower rolls, it will protect you from getting crushed by the mower. Otherwise, you could be in a lot of trouble. When you're finished mowing, you want to make sure that you engage the parking brake, disengage the PTO switch, raise the deck back to full height and drop the lever down. When you release the deck, it's now at approximately five to six inches above the ground. You're going to throttle down the mower, turn the key switch off, disengage your seat belt, and step off the mower. As you're stepping off, you want to be sure to step on the landing pad as you exit the mower. Prior to starting out the day, you always want to do what we would call a pre-trip inspection. In a pre-trip inspection, you're making sure the mower is safe to use for the day for you, your team, and your customers. As you're analyzing the mower, you want to make sure that the tire pressure is the same on both tires. The Z-Master 3000 series requires 13.5 PSI per tire. This is incredibly important because if the tire pressure is off, it's going to mess up your cutting height. It could gouge lawns and create a customer complaint. The second thing we want to check is our fuel. To check our fuel, we're going to turn the key to one switch and read our fuel gauge. It's a digital fuel gauge. It goes from empty to full and you'll read the black bars to determine your fuel level. There is a red dot on the fuel gauge that alerts you if the fuel is too low. The next thing we'll check is the oil for the engine. It's the yellow cap on the Kawasaki engines. To check the oil, you'll unscrew the dipstick, wipe it clean, insert the dipstick back into the tube. Do not screw the cap back on. Remove it and check to make sure it's between the add line and the full line. You also want to make sure that the oil is clear and not black. That would indicate the engine oil needs to be replaced. The oil that you want to install in the engine is 10W40. You want to make sure that you don't put too much oil in it or too little. Too much oil will blow the gaskets in the engine and too little oil will foul the spark plugs and seize the engine. Both are dangerous to the mower. Be sure to make sure the engine oil is between the add and the full. You want to check the oil twice a day. Once in the morning for the pre-trip, once at the end of the day before you put the mower up. You want to check the oil when the engine is turned off and the engine is cool. You want to always make sure your mower is full of fuel. We showed how to check it. When you need to re-add fuel, you go to the unleaded fuel cap. This mower takes straight unleaded fuel only, 87 octane. You unscrew it. Fill the spout and then reinstall the cap. Make sure that the cap is fully secure 
and then you're fun you're finished the fuel capacity for this machine is eight gallons last part of the mower inspection after you inspect the fuel the tire pressure and the oil level you want to make sure that the blades aren't damaged cracked bent or broken the way you do that is you want to make sure you have your nice ace hardware gloves on to protect your hands in the event of touching the blade you're going to reach under the deck, grab for the blade, slide your fingertips right along the blade edge to fill for any imperfections, dips, cracks, or bends. Make sure when you reach under the deck that the mower is turned off and there are no blades engaged. After you fill over the blades, you want to fill the inside of the deck to make sure none of the deck or the mulching kit is bent or turned underneath the blade. This is the blade baffle system for the deck. You'll see there's an A, a B, and a C. B, as you notice, is for the bagging system and the recycling mulching deck. The only time you ever want to change this button is to go from B to C. This is the baffle system for the blades on the deck. You'll notice there's an A, B, and C. We're only going to use this baffle system in the B and C locations. B, short for bagger, is where it wants to be when you have the bagging attachment. C is when you're going to do a side discharge so that you can blow the grass out and away from the deck. Once a recycling kit is installed, this baffle will go away. After removing the pipe housing from the blower, if you need to reach in and inspect to make sure there's no debris stuck in the blower engine and fan, make sure you have your safety gloves on, make sure the engine is off and the blades are disengaged. Make sure your brake is set so that the mower does not roll away from you and now you're ready to inspect. You can see in from this angle, you can see in the blower from this angle and you can reach your hand in to make sure the blades are free spinning. To reinstall the tube, pull the tube back to the main housing Push it on, line up the latch, and be sure both latches are engaged. Once you mow the lawn and you have a full bag, it's time to empty the bagger. You'll back up onto your truck, lay your tarp out over the truck, make sure your safety brake is up, your deck is at full height and turn the mower engine to the off position. Once you're in place, grab the left handle, simply pull it up all the way to the top and it will disperse the grass onto the tarp. When you're done, push the arm back in until it clicks and you're ready to go back to mowing. At the end of the day, before storing the mower, you want to make sure that the mower deck is clean from debris, grass, or leaves. The way you do that is come to the edge. You want to remove the plastic guard by pushing it down, pulling it off. This now gives you access to the blades. I mean, this now gives you access to the belts. You can remove the middle plate. Now you have full access to the belt compartment. You're going to get your backpack blower, blow out the belt area to make sure there's no buildup around the pulleys. If the blower does not do a sufficient job, it's time to pull out the pressure washer. After checking the belt compartment, 
you want to reinstall the kick plate as well as the side plastic mount. Once it clicks in, you're good to go. The next step in a post inspection is making sure you have your gloves. Again, the engine is off, the parking brake is on, and making sure your deck is clear from any grass, leaves, dirt, or debris. Then your mower is ready to be stored. Pull it into the identified parking space labeled 60 for 60 inch mower. Make sure it's in between the two yellow lines and you're done for the day. Hey guys, I'm Derek Gracely with Capstone Landscape Management. Welcome to the team. We're excited to have you on board with us. I'm gonna go over today the operational use of the Toro Commercial 48 inch walk behind. Every time we take a lawnmower out, we want to do a pre-trip inspection. The pre-trip inspection consists of four components. Your fuel, oil levels, tire pressure, and deck and blade assessment. In your pre-trip, you want to check the tire pressure. The tire pressure on the walk behind is 13 PSI. You would do it the same as a car. Unscrew the cap, check your tire pressure, screw the cap back into place. Make sure not to overfill or underfill the tire, and make sure both tires have the same air pressure so that the deck doesn't get kicked to the left or to the right and scalp the, the lawn up. The second pre-trip is going to be your oil. The oil cap is yellow on the left side of the engine. You're going to unscrew the cap, wipe the oil off the tip, reinstall the dipstick into the cap and you will not screw it back on. You'll pull it back out and you want to ensure that the oil level is between the add mark and the full line. When you can use us. You can use that other video. Okay, perfect. Yeah. You want to make sure in your pre-trip inspection that the fuel level is is full. To do that, you're going to take the fuel cap off, put it to the side, and you're going to fill the fuel tank. The fuel tank capacity is five gallons. As you fill it, you want to stop slightly below the bottom so that the fuel doesn't slosh out and make sure you have enough ventilation space in the container. When you're full, you want to put the cap back on screw it down and make sure it's snug. The last piece of the pre-inspection is to make sure the blades are not broken, damaged, or bent. You want to make sure you have your nice Ace Hardware safety gloves on. You're going to reach down under the engine and run your hand across the front and back of the blade. You're checking for any chips, bends, or cracks. And you want to make sure that you fill the inside of the deck to make sure there's no bends or cracks in it. Now we're going to talk about mower operation. When you're ready to operate the mower, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. You always want to make sure prior to cranking the, the mower on the job site to check your deck height. Again, we want to mow fescue lawns between three and a half and four and a half inches, and Bermuda and Zoysia lawns between two and two and a half inches. The way you assess this deck height is by the deck pins. There's four on the deck. The deck can be adjusted from one inch to four and a half at full height. You count the holes in the pin and they correspond to the holes in the side. You'll notice that if we're cutting a fescue lawn, we want to have our pin height at number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. We're gonna make sure it's at the eighth hole to match the eighth hole on the height adjustment. You do that by pulling the deck. 
losing, <laughs> losing the pin <laughs> and going home and quitting. <laughs> 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 and falling into deep alcohol despair. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're, you're, you're more social beast at the same cutting height most of the time, won't they? Give or take. I mean, we yeah. have best views in the music. Gotcha. So it's going to be either two and a half or four inches. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And that four one's a beast to get in there, boys. I'm just going to pass. What's the cost? Well, because you got to double wash it down there. You can actually remove So you want to set it, and you want to ensure that all four posts are the same height. For instance, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Therefore, it's four inches. We want to make sure that each of the posts are in the seventh hole position. Derek has been through the sixth parade, so he can he can count to seven. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to mowing, after you set your deck height for the proper grass type, you're ready to turn the unit on. You have your hydraulic arms to move right. You push forward on the left side. To move left, you push forward on the right. If you want to go forward, you push both arms forward. To go in reverse. Pull both arms backward. To go to neutral and turn the mower off, you simply go to the middle, release, and the safety switch will cut the engine off. When you're, when you're ready to mow, make sure the operator presence level is pushed down and you're ready to cut. When you're ready to mow, you want to push down the operator presence level, disengage the parking brake, mount on the Velky. When you're ready to mow, you're going to pull the yellow PTO lever which engages the blades. As you can see here in the photo, when you're done mowing or you need to step off the unit, you want to make sure that you disengage the PTO by pushing the, red, the yellow button down. Keep your hand on the operator presence level and engage the parking brake. At that point, when you let off the operator presence level, the engine will still run, but the blades are now disengaged. When you're done mowing and you're ready to put the mower up, you're going to reduce the throttle down to the turtle and turn the unit off. When cranking the coal mower, you want to engage the choke all the way down to the choke picture. Press down the operator presence lever. Put the throttle to half to three quarters throttle and turn the engine on. Once the engine begins running, you pull back on the choke, give more throttle, and you're ready to go. Anytime you're mowing, on a very soft lawn or on a hillside to where standing on the Velky is not a safe call, you want to pull the Velky up. The way you do that is turn the Velky sideways, lift from the bottom, and clip the Velky to the clip. Now you're ready to mow and walk behind the unit. When you're loading or unloading the truck, you want to make sure the Velky is in the raised position so that when you're backing the Velky off the truck, it doesn't flip underneath the mower and damage the machine. At the end of the day, before stowing the mower overnight, you want to make sure to do several things. You want to make sure that the mower deck is clean underneath. The way you do that is put your leather palm ace gloves on. You're going to reach under the deck and make sure that there's nothing binding or blocking the blades or any buildup underneath the deck. Next, you're going to pull the plastic off the top to expose the belts. 
so that you can blow the debris, leaves, and any other items that might be stuck in there. You do that by flipping the tab up, lifting the edge, sliding it out. This gives you access to the belts. You're going to blow that out with your backpack blower and then reinstall the plastic cover. You slide it in, line the hole up, and push the tab down. We just made this video. Three, three tabs, actually. Four, yeah, three tabs. That whole thing just lifts off. There you go. That gives you a lot better access to global.